Hi everyone, welcome to my review of Stanley Kubrick's Spartacus in 1960. Here is the Blu-ray of course, and yes, we're back with the next Kubrick review. Um, yes, in the series of course. Stanley Kubrick of course, um, this is the, really the only film um, you know, where he didn't kind of write um, and kind of um, have you know, full, full input really um, in terms of, compared to his other works, you know, he didn't have complete control in you know, his early ones, but you know, kind of, this is the one that he kind of, he, at times you, know, you could say he disowned, um, or at least didn't feel too strongly about because he didn't get to say exactly what he wanted to in many aspects of the film, particularly of course, um, you know, the actual character of Spartacus, he thought you know, this character of Spartacus in the film was being portrayed in kind of too much of a perfect light, uh, you know, with no flaws. I disagree, I actually, you know, and I think um, this film, of course, um, is, is quite divisive, um, you know, mainly maybe because, yes, um, of the, some feelings uh, towards the film, um, many people probably have just sort of viewed it differently. Um, but yes, basically, this film, of course, actually is the second most acclaimed on Rotten Tomatoes, um, you know, the Kubrick films, and yes, basically, it is very popular at times, other times not so much. On the rankings, you can see it appearing right at the bottom. Um, and, you know, I think it is divisive at times. Many people call it, you know, a lesser film um, and certainly a lesser Kubrick film. Um, but, yes, basically, this is one of the first, um, you could say, yes, the, the second second Kubrick film I ever saw, um, after The Shining, of course. Um, I saw that when I was very, very young. Um, this I saw before I was 10, probably, actually, um, for the first time. And yes, I've seen it many times since, um, and yes, you know, I think, um, what do I think of the film? Um, for me, it's a masterpiece, um, that's my opinion. And yes, um, you know, I think I've seen it many, many times, and um, once again, last saw it last year, um, you know, in March, um, and this is my next rewatch again, of course, um, for this year of Kubrick, and, and yes, um, for me, it's not only a masterpiece, but it is actually um, one of the best films ever made. Um, I think this is an absolutely stunning film, um, really is. This film, of course, um, yes, you can say it's not not really like a Kubrick film in many areas. Um, there is some some moments in, in definitely. Um, if you, yes, the cinematography, um, although very different, um, you have some traits in there, and actually the overall precise feel that it has um, is very Kubrickian. Um, but yes, some of the angles as well, I think, yeah, definitely um, sort of kind of <clears throat> kind of off angles um, to create an intensity, um, and just I suppose um, getting the best out of his actors in, in a particular way. Then yes, you can compare it a bit, um, but overall it doesn't really feel, you know, like the later Kubrick films. Um, of course, none of these early ones do really for me, as we've said. Um, but I, I do love them, of course. Um, they just don't really feel. When I think Kubrick, um, you know, and how I was, I was shocked, you know, when I first saw some of the, the you know, the really, really Kubrick films, even you know, Clockwork Orange and stuff, about how good they were. Um, you know, that, that's not what I'm on about. These films, um, you know, are kind of. Yes, they made by Kubrick, they don't really feel like that Kubrick, you know, how he kind of developed into this, you know, completely, um, you know, off the charts kind of guy. Um, this film is, though, I think this is one of the best films ever made. It's just not, you know, top five material um, of his, but I think actually it's one of the better Kubrick films. Um, I don't think it's in, you know, near the bottom. I actually do prefer it to quite a few of the other ones. I love epic films, um, you know, and I think this story as well, it's really just amazing, this story, um, the way... Of course, it's been told a couple of times. Um, of course, you've got the TV show, um, which I'd recommend. But for me, this is the best, um, you know, kind of adaptation um, kind of thing. Uh, and yes, it doesn't, at times, of course, um, you know, Kubrick, of course, um, I can see he would have done things very, very differently. Um, but for me, I don't have any flaws with this film. Um, it just so happened it's turned out to be, you know, a, a masterpiece. Uh, and yes, basically, of course, most people would be, uh, you know, familiar with the story, um, of course. These slaves, um, you know, are at the beginning in this kind of gladiator um, school, um, getting trained up, of course. The main character um, in the opening scene, of course, you revealed it is Spartacus. Um, and, of course, it wasn't actually, um, you know, he wasn't really called Spartacus. That's, that's not really the case. But, yes, this is, um, you know, it's been told in the film that, um, you know, his name is Spartacus. And, basically, um, he gets sent to this, you know, this school uh, where they get trained up to be gladiators. And eventually, you know, fight to the death um, for the entertainment of, of many other, you know, viewers uh, for the Romans. Um, and yes, basically, um, you know, you, you've kind of the opening scene actually was the only one that wasn't directed by Kubrick, I believe. Um, Anthony Mann was, uh, you know, in there. And then after a week, um, I believe Kirk Douglas fired him. And there was a lot of, uh, you know, kind of um, hostility between him and Kubrick, um, which is a shame. Um, yeah, and basically. It was the only the opening scene that wasn't directed by Kubrick, um, I believe, and the rest of the film was. Um, but yes, um, 
After this opening scene, we kind of were there for roughly about forty-five minutes in this arena. Um, the, the score, and then of course the, the bit where they fight and everything um, to the death. Uh, and basically, um, this is really one of the most perfect um, kind of opening acts to a film. Um, you know, just the way it sets up all the characters, uh, the struggles, and uh, you know, just it's got the romance in there as well. Um, Kirk Douglas, you know, I've, I've I've already reviewed Paths of Glory. Um, I thought that's a masterpiece. It didn't get me to my plus tiers, but you know, it's a masterpiece for me. Not quite in my top 200. Um, well, this film is actually my top 100 films of all time. Um, not, you know, high up in there, but it is It is in there. Um, that's how good it is for me. And yes, um, Kirk Douglas, of course, in Parcel Glory was stunning. He, he you know, gave a, a, a such a powerful, uh, you know, kind of controlled performance. Um, well, in this film, he's about 10 times better. Um, you know, he's, this is his best performance by far. And for me, one of the best performances... In cinema, um, it is just um, everything you can kind of want from a protagonist, um, and it's just it's so good, you know, it's so intense, so moving, um, sincere, and, and kind of yeah, it's just so emotional, especially towards the end of the film. Um, and it's just such a likable um, you know, kind of protagonist. The performance is really perfect. Um, I cannot fault it there. Gene Simmons, of course, with uh, as Verinia, um, of course, the love interest, his romance in the film, and one of the best in cinema for me, um, of course. It just it goes so many different places that it's just beautiful, really is, and then very very moving um, as well. Of course, uh, Peter Ustinov, uh, who won the Oscar actually for Best Supporting Actor, um, plays uh, Batty Artis, um, and yes, you've got Crassus, um, played by um, Laurence Olivier, um, who is off the charts um, as really the main villain of the film, um, you could say, and you know Batty Artis is kind of an anti-villain, you you could say um, he's not really a villain, he's kind of more bumbling um, and kind of charming kind of guy that, that just so happens to, of course, at first, you know, um, kind of own these slaves and stuff um, and, and train them up. Does things, you know, that, that are kind of, um, of course, disgusting, but, you know, compared to everyone else in the film and the way he's portrayed, I think it isn't really, he isn't really a villain. Um, yes, there won't be many spoilers in this um, review, but there might be a couple of things that if you've not seen, maybe you, you might want to watch this after you've seen the film. Um, but yes, basically, of course, around the hour mark, um, you know, after that, you know, it's past the breakout. Um, they do break out of the gladiator kind of school, um, and that is just one of the most satisfying moments in cinema. Um, you know, this whole kind of um, this breakout, you know, is one of the best sequences in cinema for sure. Um, this film, every time I kind of um, just remembers, you know, how kind of uh, raw and, and quite violent this film is. Um, it is only a PG, um, and it really doesn't. I think actually, it's more violent than it should. Then it says, you know, I think um, there's a lot of, you know, gore, there's people getting their arms chopped off, um, you know, kind of so many different things. And actually, one of the moments when I, an eye starts bleeding, um, I'm pretty sure, you know, when someone's getting strangled. Um, so, yeah, there's loads of stuff, of course. And, yeah, general, uh, general, you know, in, in the action scenes, I think actually, you know, they're better than most people say. Um, and they are raw. They're kind of, um, you know, it's kind of really shocking moments, uh, but it's also controlled and precise by the camera, um, you know, movements. The cinematography in this film, um, you know, is stunning. Um, of course, got the Oscar for that as well. Um, and it's just, just wonderful. Um, you know, in that sense, it can be, you know, as I say, there's, there's some moments where flourishes, where you get some sort of Kubrick, um, you know, standards at least, um, you know, hints of, say, you know, Barry Lyndon uh, in terms of cinematography, um, the way people are arranged, um, you know, in the frame. The armies, you know, the battle sequences and everything, um, you know, you can, you can compare it to that, although not really, um, most films can't really be compared to Barry Lyndon, um, but yes, basically, this film for me, you know, it just builds and builds. The story, of course, um, you know, escalates, and you know, once you get to the kind of, um, the hour mark, um, introduce more politics, um, the kind of power struggles among the Romans, um, and it's just so compelling, you know, this has been um, called an epic, uh, kind of swords and sandals epic. It's also intellectual um, as well as action-packed, and yes, hit the nail on the head there. Um, you know, it really is just um, the script, um, of course, and yeah, as I say, it's not by Kubrick, um, but the script is so wonderful, it really is, um, and it's just something that's so thought-provoking, um, and it's just so human. Um, I think there's so many moments in this film, um, you know, and they're kind of, of course, to do with the music as well. Alex North, of course, composed the score, which is just wonderful, um, and yes, basically, I think it should have won the Oscar that year for the ones that were nominated. Um, but yes, the way that this is used throughout the film, um, it's just wonderful. And there's so many moments in the script, um, you know, you've got mainly in the middle of the film and, and the last third as well. 
but it's just truly something else, you know, the spiritual levels um, this film reached. It's something else, you know, I think um, it brings me to tears in many moments throughout the film, you know, I think you watch this, um, I watch this, you know, quite a lot um, now and, and kind of, I always think, you know, this battle sequence, not the battle sequence, the kind of break out at the beginning, it's just so good um, and it's hard to kind of, does the rest of the film top that? Um, and actually, yeah, it just, again, surprised me once again, you know, kind of, each act is probably, each third of the film, sorry, is kind of better than the last, you know, I think actually uh, it's, it just gets better and better, this film. The final act um, and the last sort of 20 minutes in particular is just, again, some of the greatest moments in cinema, um, you know, the levels of emotion that it reaches and just everything coming together there. Um, a very, very daring ending, um, definitely. Um, this could have ended very, very differently and not, you know, not have been as impacting, um, but for me, the ending is truly something else and it's kind of got, it's, it's kind of uplifting in, in a moment as well um, and hopeful, um, you know, and it kind of just, yes, something is satisfying there, but then of course it's tragic as well. Um, you know, it's widely known this story, you know, it's very, very tragic, of course. I'm not going to get into the different plot details there, but yes, this film really is a deeply human one. Um, and of course, the action scenes um, throughout the film are just so well directed, um, you know, I think, as I said, there's a rawness to them, um, an intensity, a kind of um, visceral feel that you have. Um, it's just something that's really, really shocking. Um, and as I've said, the PG kind of uh, certificate is, is baffling. But yes, combine that with the kind of um, the graceful, you know, tracking shots, um, the crane shots, all this kind of stuff that you see in a lot of Hollywood epics, uh, which I love. Um, you combine that with, with the kind of rawness that it has. And it's a perfect combination. Um, and actually, you know, it works out that for me. Yes, I think Kubrick was, was the right man to kind of direct this film. I think, um, of course, yes, understandably and, and respectfully, he does have, you know, he did have issues with, with the kind of the creative input that he had, which is, of course, understandable, you know, in that all, all respect, of course. Yes, he's, you know, at his best, of course, when he had full control, he, he you know, he's way, way above this film even. Um, but yes, I think, um, actually, I don't have any problems with the film, and I do, I love what Kubrick done, you know, with the film, even though he didn't get to, you know, fully you make it his own sort of vision in that sense. Um, you know, the combination of his input and everyone else's, I think, made for a masterpiece, um, you know, I think as well. The the romance, as I've said, it's just so moving, um, you know, and of course the way that it progresses throughout the film, um, it's just something that I, I fully rooted for. Um, you know, it's this classic kind of um, Hollywood romance, which really is my favorite, definitely, um, kind of stuff. Gone with the Wind as well, you know, just all this, all these, um, you know, Hollywood kind of, epic, you know, and romances and stuff, um, I absolutely love, and this one really, it brings that kind of beauty and everything to it, and, and kind of just the charm of it all, um, combine this with a very, very tragic and human tale, and you have, well, for me, in every, you know, every regard, one of the best films ever made, um, I think, it's not, it's definitely not, you know, one of the worst sort of three or four Kubrick films, uh, for me, it really is something else, um, and it's just, um, for me, personally, way above, you know, Paths of Glory, um, which many people, of course, of the two, um, Paths is way more popular, um, you know, and I think that's fine, that's understandable, but for me, um, this is much better in every way, um, and actually, even, you know, if you're going for the kind of political, or, you know, kind of messages there, which I don't always, you know, get too excited about in films, uh, you know, necessarily, um, but, yeah, of course, that was wonderful in Paths, um, I think, for me, this one is even more, even in that sense, it's more powerful, it's more kind of, um, thought-provoking and just um, better achieved, better executed, and really is, um, you know, because this is an epic, of course, um, you know, and I love epics. When, you know, a, a film is, is, is amazing, I love, you know, I think it can go on for as long as it really needs to, um, and I love, I do generally prefer um, epic films, you know, longer films so I can get more invested and it's more of a journey, as I've said before. This film, of course, you know, it, it's kind of the longest Kubrick film, roughly, um, and yes, along with course Barry Lyndon um, and I just love the way that it kind of it takes its time to build the characters um, the narrative is so perfect um, it's so well constructed um, you know performances Kirk Douglas is off the charts um, of course Laurence Olivier um, wow really um, every time you know I think that it's, it's certainly a moment towards the end where he just kind of loses it and um, really is a, a monumental performance um, actually I think even he should have actually probably won the best supporting actor, um, you know, for, for this film. But again, Peter Ustinov is so good in this film. Um, everyone, you know, Charles Lawton, perfect. Um, the casting in this film is really perfect. Um, of course, of 
course, um, Tony Curtis. It's just all these characters, all these kind of um, moments. And of course, the, the kind of the general kind of banding together, um, kind of, of course, fighting for freedom is something, of course, that everyone can relate to, um, you know, kind of thing. Uh, it's just, it's so inspirational, kind of um, something you get behind. Uh, it just drives the film. Uh, and yes, it just goes on. It has such a flow um, that, of course, you know, by the end, for me, you know, I always think, um, wow, that, you know, I would love to have seen more of that, um, you know, maybe an extended version or something like that. But as it stands, um, for me, a perfect masterpiece and um, really is something else. The score is wonderful. Um, the action scenes are mind-blowing, really. Um, of course, many moments as well, you know, where, where kind of um, it looks very, very dangerous. Uh, some of the stuff in there, you know, ch check that out. Especially towards the end, you know, the battle scene uh, with the fire involved there. Um, it really is just such an intense film, you know, and, and just... It's a beautiful film, you know, graceful, kind of sweeping, epic, um, romantic, kind of... Um, you know, fantastical at times, but really, it's the rawness as well and the the emotions and everything that combine that. And it just have one of the best films ever made. Um, of course, in the centre of the film as well, that kind of that song that happens, song. You know, the kind of um, moment, moment there, of course, and everyone kind of around the campfire. Um, you know, it really is such a moving scene. Um, you know, it just brings me to tears every time. And the whole the whole dialogue between um, you know, kind of. Spartacus and Verunia, um is something else, it really is, and it just achieves overall this film, you know, a level of uh, spiritualness that really um, is, is, is just just wonderful, really is a wonderful film, inspirational, um, action-packed, and of course just a script that works on every level for me, the performances are really flawless, um, and it's just one of the best protagonists um, for me in, in film, um, you know, quite, quite a kind of tradition for, for Kubrick films, um, and of course this wasn't entirely, you know, his full vision. He wanted Kubrick, um, and of course, understandable that he he was kind of um, upset about this, um, of course. But really, think about it. Um, you know, most because he's an auteur, he was an auteur. Um, you know, I think compared with his other works, yes, it's not you know as much of creative input. But a lot of you know directors make films. You know, kind of um, the creative level of input really is kind of on par with this kind of thing, it's just because he was such an auteur and he was usually known for writing and directing and, and kind of just immersing, you know, in, in every single sort of thing and kind of his whole style and everything came through. Um, but yes, in comparison, it can kind of be seen like it's not his film, but really, I think, I do count it as a Kubrick film. Um, of course, it will be on my ranking, um, just to let you know that. And yes, for me, of course, it gets full marks. Um, it's one of the best, um, you know, kind of epics of all time and um, one of the best films ever made. Um, just in my top 100 at the moment. Um, it may come out, you know, once I, I rewatch a couple of the, you know, some of my um, kind of around the top 100, 120 mark, uh, a bit unordered um, on my list, but I think this is probably for now in there, um, but I've of course got to rewatch a couple of other ones to see, you know, kind of the order in there, but yes, that means of course, um, it gets 100% plus, and um, of course, for me, and, and this is a personal opinion, it is one of the best films ever made, and it gets 100% plus, tier one, um, yes, I do think it's one of the best films. I think it's flawless, um, a mind-blowing film, um, you know, with such strong emotions. Um, it's just wonderful, charming film um, that is really beautiful romance. Um, you know, it's got great comedy, of course. Um, you know, Kubrick kind of brings that to the to the tables again, um, that he kind of done comparable to Paths of Glory, um, a bit different. But yes, I think um, how satisfying this film is, but yeah, how tragic it is. Um, it, and it's just, of course, a raw, unflinching film um, that is very, very, at the same time, precise, um, you know, graceful, spiritual, um, and just so well executed that it is one of the best films ever made. But Spartacus, for me, is a true epic. Um, you know, for me, it's a masterpiece, um, one of the best films ever made. And of course, yes, you know, it may come to a shock to some people, but I do think this is better than, than Parcel Glory and, and quite a few, a few of the other ones. Um, you know, it's not my top five, um, that's all I'll say, but you know, it is. For me, one of the best films I've made. It's, it's high on my favourite films list, of course, in my top 100. Um, and yes, of course, would I recommend it? Absolutely. Um, most people probably have seen this by now, um, kind of thing. <clears throat> it's quite a popular film at times. Again, a bit divisive, but you know, I think um, I'm on the positive side. Understandable, of course, you know, that Kubrick kind of um, was unhappy with this film, you know, just the, of course, that's, that's how it works, you know, if you can't say what you really want to say, of course that can be frustrating. So of course, thanks for watching my review, um, and of course, 
been away for a few days, um, you know, in terms of YouTube. Of course, I have been watching films, um, and of course, I have actually done a couple of reviews, um, including Rise of the Planet of the Apes, um, that I rewatched, of course. Been a long time since I done, you know, last October, of course, um, with the Planet of the Apes films. Had a little break there, um, but also, same Private Ryan. Um, I need to review that actually, um, and of course, that'll be up within the next few days. Um, that was the Spielberg film that I, I kind of mentioned there. So yes, be a couple of reviews. Um, coming in the next few days, uh, Return of the Pink Panther as well, um, and yes, thanks for watching my review.